Welcome back to another episode of CAD Jungle. In today's exercise, we're going to be modeling this tap bit. Okay, let's get right to it. What we're going to start out by doing is creating a new component. We're going to name it tap bit. We're going to create a sketch on the front plane. We're going to select the line tool and create a line that's about 90 millimeters long. Next, we're going to go ahead and complete the profile with a tap bit. Let's go ahead and start deleting some of these constraints to help us in the long run. Okay, let's start adding our own constraints. For this horizontal line here, we're going to give it a horizontal constraint, as well as this line here. Next, we're going to make this line perpendicular to this line. So they're 90 degrees from each other. 90 degree angle, actually. Okay. For the horizontal lines, we're going to go ahead and give it some dimensions. So this first horizontal line, I'm going to make about 3.75 millimeters. Second horizontal line, we're going to make about 5.5 millimeters. For the line at the end, we're going to make this about 3 millimeters. From this point to this point, we're going to make this about 2.5 millimeters. From this point to this point, we're going to make this about 40 millimeters. Okay. The angle between this line and this line, we're going to make about 150 millimeters. I'm going to make this point to this point about four millimeters. I'm going to take this line to the bottom line and set the angle to about 45 degrees. From this point to this point, I'm going to set the dimensions to about 28 millimeters. And the angle between this line in this line, we're going to make about 132 millimeters. And as you can see now, the sketch is fully defined. I'll give you a second to take a look at that, those dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch. Next, we're going to be using the revolve tool. As you can see, the profile has already been selected for us. If not, go ahead and select the profile and it'll turn blue. For the axis, we'll just select the bottom, and it sets it up for us. It's going to be a new body, 360 degrees. We're going to click OK. OK, next. What we're going to be doing now is since the edge is actually tapered, we're going to be creating the threads using the coil tool. So to do this, we're going to select the left side, create correction, we're going to create the coil tool, use the coil tool on the left plane, starting in the center, dragging it out to the edge. We'll set the dimensions later. To get a better view, we'll turn it to the side. We're going to start out with the type. Type for this is going to be height and pitch. Okay. The rotation can be whatever you want, but for the sake of argument, I just reversed it. And the diameter I'm going to set 
to 10 millimeters. I'm just tabbing through the dimensions. The height is going to be 30.576. The pitch is going to be 0.9. If you get an error, it's okay. It'll correct itself once we add all dimensions. The angle is going to be 2 degrees. The section is going to be triangular internal. It's going to be on the center. And the section size is going to make 4 millimeters. And the operation is going to be set to cut. Click OK. Now, for this next step, it's not something you absolutely have to do, but I did it just to spruce it up a bit. What I'm going to do is give it a chamfer. I'm going to select the chamfer tool. And we're going to be making two selections. The first is going to be the outer edges. I'll make it 0 0.06 millimeters. I'm going to hit the plus symbol. Make the second selection internal. I'm going to give it a 0 0.09 millimeter chamfer. Equal distance. And click OK. OK. Next, we're going to be creating these grooves. And I'll go ahead and change the display settings. The visual style is going to be set to wireframe with visible edges only. And this is what we're going to be creating. OK, I'm going to create a sketch on the front plane. I'm going to create a construction line from the origin point to the edge. And if it doesn't lock to the edge, what we can do is we can go ahead Actually, we don't need to actually have it lined up, so we'll just go ahead and create the uh, construction line and drag it out, end it, because it's going to be for reference only. And what we want to do, on click construction, I'm going to select a two-point rectangle. Just draw it out in space until it somewhat intersects the actual tap bit. Okay, so what we want to do now is constrain it. So we're going to make this edge, actually, we may need to use the project tool. So we're going to use project, I'm just going to select this line right here, and click OK. All right, so I want this edge to be collinear with this edge, okay, we're going to give it some dimensions. We're going to make this edge 3.5 millimeters. We're going to set the bottom of the triangle correction rectangle dimension to this line. It's going to be 4.5 millimeters. Dimensions for the top of the, of the actual rectangle, we're going to make 13 millimeters. And last but not least, we're going to give it a fillet of about 2 millimeters. And now it's fully defined. Go ahead and finish the sketch. And next, we're going to select the Extrude tool. And as you can see, the profile selected. We want it to be symmetric. Distance is going to be all. Operation is going to be cut. Click OK. Now, we want it to be, we want to give it around four sides. So 
we're going to use the circular pattern tool. Make sure that features are selected. Down in our timeline, we're going to select the last extrusion we just created. Axis, you can just select the body. And we'll make the quantity four. Click OK. Now, what we want to do now is set ourselves up to create the grooves that set inside these threads. Okay. I'm going to flip the model around to the back. I'm going to create a sketch in the back plane. I'm going to start out using the line tool. I'm going to left click and then left click and hold to create somewhat of an arch. Let go and then hit the check mark. All right. Let's add some dimensions. First things first, though, let's constrain this point from here to here. I'm going to dimension it from this point to this point. It's going to be about 7.5 millimeters. And this arch here, we're going to give a dimension of about 18.2 millimeters. Okay. And this line, we're going to make about 31 millimeters. And as you can see now, once again, sketch is fully defined. Go ahead and finish the sketch. Okay. What we want to do now is set up a profile for the grooves. Okay. I'm going to create a sketch on the left plane. Okay. I'm going to start out by using the line tool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Create an angle. Line. We'll dimension it to be about 7.3 millimeters. Okay. Next, we're going to be using the spline tool to give us the curved shape. So I'm going to start at this point. Just drag it down once. Make sure it's attached to this line here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and switch to wireframe view. All right. So now you can see things a lot better. All we're going to need to do now is just dimension this so we can fully define this profile. Okay. First things first. I'm going to start from this point to the center point and measure it about 2.04 millimeters. From this point to the center point, I'm going to measure it about 6.86 .6 millimeters. From this point to this point, I'm going to measure about 1.68 millimeters from this point to this point. I'm going to measure about 4.99 millimeters. Okay. From this point to this point. second here. OK. 
Okay. There we go. That is about 2.43 millimeters. And as you can see now, sketch is fully defined. I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch. Next, we're going to be using the sweep command and create the groups. We're going to start out by selecting the profile. It's going to be a single path. The path we're going to be using is the line we previously created. And the operation is going to be cut. Click OK. Okay, now we need three more of these grooves, so I'm going to use the circular pattern to create this. Make sure features are selected. The objects, we're going to select the last sweep command we used. The axis, we're just going to select the body. Quantity is going to be three. Click OK. I'm going to go ahead and bring back the visual style we needed, shaded with visible edges only. And last but not least, we're going to go ahead and give it an appearance. You can set it up to be whatever appearance you like, but for the sake of this uh, video, I did my own appearances, obviously. Hit the A key. I chose the outside to be gold, polished. Okay. Okay. Set the faces. Actually, let's just go ahead and make it a darker color. Well, there you have it, a tad bit. Well, I hope this video was informative and allowed you to get some exercise using Fusion 360. Please like and subscribe if you like the content, and I'll see you in the next video.